You know, you can't get a movie that's much more polarizing than The Last Jedi. Top critics on Rotten Tomatoes have given it a 96% certified fresh rating, while audiences score it at only 49% positive. On Metacritic, 94.5% of the reviews from critics are positive, compared to 38.2% of audience reviews. So who's to blame for this disparity? Ryan Johnson? Internet trolls? Porgs? Uh, as it turns out, it was... me? Welcome to Film Theory, the only show on the internet where talking about data regression and social psychology will actually make you more popular. And speaking of popularity, you may have heard that the biggest film franchise in history had another installment open not too long ago. Uh, no, not that one, Pitches. Although I can't imagine how they've come up with three movies worth of acapella puns. My fellow Aka people. Oh, I'm Aka G! Listen up, acaballers. Uh, excuse me? Oh, they just shoved the word acapella into things where it really didn't belong, so they didn't even try. Aka awkward. No, I'm of course referring to Star Wars. And before I go any further, I'm gonna make two things clear. One, if you still haven't seen The Last Jedi and have somehow avoided spoilers for over a month, but still don't want it spoiled for you, well then, you should probably both stop watching this video now and also teach me your spoiler-repellent ways, oh intrepid navigator of the interwebs. And two, I know that every Every word I've ever said about Star Wars to this point has been about as reliable as Hayden Christensen's acting. What have I done? But bear with me here today, guys and gals, because today I'm not trying to predict Star Wars. I've had enough of that. Instead, I'm gonna analyze it. Namely, how we can explain the huge differences in response to The Last Jedi. A lot of people loved it, particularly the critics. I loved it the second yeah, time. Yeah, I did! And a lot of people hated it. And at this point, I hated the movie so much. And Boy, did the haters hate it. I mean, right now there's a petition written for Disney to remove The Last Jedi from the Star Wars canon and completely remake Episode 8. And you would think that this is one of those far out fringe petitions with a few dozen signatures, but oh no, my friends, over 80,000 people have signed this thing. This type of extreme divide is pretty unusual. And so I, of course, wanted to analyze what the underlying cause was. But apparently, I didn't have to look too far for my answer. It was me the whole time. No joke, Ryan Parker from The Hollywood Reporter said, quote, Points of disgust seem to run the gamut, but perhaps the underlying factor can be traced back to expectations born out of wild theories stoked by fan sites and YouTube channels. Sure, but he could be talking about literally any of the dozens of great Star Wars creators on- Oh, no, wait, no, it's definitely me. Quote again, A prime example of wild expectations not met is a fan-made video on YouTube titled Film Theory, Raise Parents, Solved. The fan video, more than 12 minutes long, deconstructs dialogue, looks between characters, and even the seating arrangement for the table read of The Force Awakens. Yeah, okay, but uh, surely this has got to be an outlier, right? Nope, nope, here's another. From Nick Johnston at Vanya Land, quote, Lurking behind all this bitterness is a poison that's obliterating our cinematic discourse, the fan theory. Wow, not only am I, Matt Pat, small little YouTube creator, bringing down the entirety of the Disney empire, I am also destroying the entirety of film criticism as we know it with my... Ability to overanalyze. Well, if claims like that don't deserve an episode, I don't know what does. At the risk of getting inception levels of meta here, today's episode is a theory about theories. Do theories hurt movies and our enjoyment of them? Should I be looking for a new job? Why have I not fulfilled my losers half of the bet I made last Star Wars episode and reenacted a scene from the room yet? You got Tammy! All in good time, my friends. All in good time. So if we're gonna determine whether theories are ruining movies, let's start with a pretty basic question. Question. Can we prove that theories fundamentally change our experience when we watch something? According to psychology, the answer is a resounding yes. And there are three principles specifically that prove it. The first is known as the mere exposure effect, which states that people tend to prefer things, people, and ideas with which they're familiar. Here's how it works. In 1968, psychologists set up a study where they showed people who don't speak Chinese a series of Chinese characters, and then asked them to guess what the characters meant. Some of the characters 
characters were in the list only once or twice, but others showed up as much as 25 times. And the researchers found that as subjects saw the same characters over and over again, they started guessing that they meant more and more positive things. In short, the more familiar something feels, even if it's something as foreign as an obscure Chinese character, the more likely we are to have a positive reaction to it. And this absolutely applies to The Last Jedi. With any Star Wars movie, you're gonna get a lot of new developments, new characters, new creatures, etc. But The Last Jedi gives us a lot of them, and dedicates a lot of screen time to them. You have Admiral Holdo, who we've never even heard of before, who's suddenly a big deal in this resistance and gets a whole lot of screen time. DJ is integral to Finn's storyline, weird stutters and all, as is Rose Tico, doing whatever it is Rose Tico does, and Porgs, and Crystal Foxes, and Judgmental Fish Nuns, and Milky Lizard Giraffes. And that's just the characters. We're not even mentioning new force powers like astral projection, telepathy, near-death space telekinesis. It's a lot of newness to take in. And honestly, theories reinforce the mere exposure effect because they tend to focus on characters and storylines that already exist and make predictions that are at least rooted in what happened before. In my prediction videos for The Last Jedi, I wasn't like, hey, a new purple-haired character will come out and save the day in one of the most badass climaxes of all time. Or Leia will pull out force powers, the likes of which we've never seen her use before, nor have we ever really seen used in the franchise before. Simply because that would be a crappy theory. They're baseless assumptions. They would come out of nowhere. The best theories, regardless of whether they're right or wrong, need to be housed in evidence, which means relying on what already exists, not what's new. And sure, if you're exposed to theories of why Han and Leia are undoubtedly raised parents enough times, yeah, you're gonna start to like that one too. It's mere exposure in action. Did you like The Last Jedi better after seeing it one or two more times? Mere exposure again. Which ties nicely into psychological principle number two here, the illusory truth effect. The illusory truth effect is the phenomenon in which you tend to believe information that you heard repeated over and over, regardless of how true that information actually is. You know how you shouldn't swim for 30 minutes after you eat because you'll cramp up and drown? You've heard that a hundred times, right? Well, scientifically, it's flat out wrong. It's a myth. The point is, though, that when we hear something a lot, we tend to believe it without questioning. And boy, oh boy, can theories play a part in that. Let's say you were one of the people who thought Rey was a descendant of Obi-Wan Kenobi, so you go to YouTube to check it out in more detail. You watch a video, you find it interesting, and then based on the suggested videos, you watch another, and then another, and the next thing you know, it's 3 a.m., you probably should have done your homework by this point, but oh my gosh, the odd one's out, just put up another new video, gotta watch that one. So now you gotta go watch the Last Jedi, and you might not even realize how much of an open mind you don't have at this point. There are some of you out there who probably don't believe me when I say that. Oh, sure, MatPat, I dabbled in theories about The Last Jedi, but I was ready to accept whatever the movie was actually about. Not according to science. According to a paper published in 2015, we are subject to the illusory truth effect even if we know that something we're hearing doesn't count as established fact. Even if we know it's just a theory, your brain is starting to treat it as truth anyway. And the last element of psychology that's relevant here doesn't have a fancy, catchy name, but it's pretty simple to understand. The more information you have when you're making a prediction, the more confident you'll be about that prediction. Let me explain because a 2008 paper proved exactly this. Experts in college football were asked to predict the outcomes of certain games. Before they made their predictions, though, they were given little bits of random information about the teams. Six factoids in round one, 12 factoids in round two, all the way up to 30. After making their guesses, they were then asked to rate how confident they were with their choices. As they were given more and more information, their accuracy in predicting who actually won the games stayed the same. But their confidence in those predictions being correct increased substantially. And I feel like it's necessary for me to bring this one up because this is the one that hits the closest to home for me. When I was researching for my theory on the plot of The Last Jedi, I felt like I went through everything. Trailers, tweets from the cast, movie posters, interviews, the extended universe, even pre-releases for merchandise. Did it help my confidence? Well... Let's go to the tape. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Before anyone in the world sees this movie, I am going to call the major twists of Star Wars The Last Jedi based on trailer analysis and good old-fashioned research. And to make things a little more interesting, let's put some stakes on it. If I'm right, then you have to subscribe to this channel, come back to the Film Theorist channel, and force push that subscribe button. And if I'm wrong, I don't know, that's your side of the deal. My guess is that superfans felt the same way. They'd watched the trailers a hundred times and read everything they could get their 
their hands on in the hopes of figuring out how The Last Jedi was gonna go, and those who really had a vested interest in certain things happening were probably pretty confident that they were right. And when things worked out differently than they'd expected, well, that's when we got a subset of fans who were less than pleased with the movie. So would some fans have been better off if there had been no theories about The Last Jedi at all? Yeah probably, but slap a big old double C thick butt right here, Mr. Krabs, because in a move that will surprise literally zero people watching right now, I'd like to defend theories for a second. Part of the backlash against the backlash to The Last Jedi has focused on criticism of the movie that's misogynistic and racist. That Vanya Land article from earlier, I quote, there are two main factions inside the opposition to The Last Jedi. First, we have the alt-right, who are angry that a modern film franchise would include non-white non-male people. The second faction is full of scorned fans who are lashing out that The Last Jedi didn't meet their exact specifications for a Star Wars movie. Yeah, are those the only two groups of people disappointed with this movie? Nazis and fanboys? Remember, this is the same article that said that theories were the thing ruining film criticism. Because let me come right out and say it, friends, I am not a political extremist, nor am I someone overly attached to the Star Wars franchise, and I think that there are some very valid complaints that you can level at this movie, ones that play into this whole idea of theorizing. Perhaps the biggest one, though, is that the movie tends to ignore the basic dramatic principle known as Chekhov's gun. The playwright Anton Chekhov famously coined the axiom that, quote, if in the first act you've hung a pistol on the wall, then in the following one it should be fired. Otherwise, don't put it in there. In other words, don't tease elements of plot that don't actually pay off. You ever wonder why everyone loves Breaking Bad so much? Because nothing in that story was wasted. Everything that was introduced into Breaking Bad had a purpose and a payoff, right down to the Roomba. It was a Titan-contained story where there were no dangling threads. And when you're making prediction theories, this is the sort of stuff you've got to rely on. Why was this introduced into the story, and how will it factor into the narrative moving forward? Maybe I'm still crate levels of being salty about being wrong, but when the previous film is filled with meaningful glances, and references to being called... That lightsaber was Luke's and his fathers before him, and now it calls to you. Even showing parents flying away, then you fill the next movie with repeated teases that they're about to reveal Ray's parentage like a dozen times, only to at the end say, JK, it doesn't matter, your parents were drunks who were buried in a random grave. Look, I get it that part of this movie's message is that things will disappoint you, that the Force isn't some secret club that you have to be born into and that some kids can just use it to sweep up without ever leaving the couch. But do you really expect to tease big reveals just to say that they're irrelevant and then not piss off moviegoers? If you set up things that don't pay off, that's gonna make some people upset. It looks like sloppy writing. You introduced a Chekhov's lightsaber into the story, and then you immediately threw it away. And I get the point. This is a dismissal of everything that came before. But you gotta understand that it's frustrating from a storytelling standpoint, because it leads us to the idea that everything is meaningless. By the same token, twists are only as good as the sense that they make. Admiral Holdo's plan to light speed herself into the First Order's cruiser was a really cool moment, but I have a hard time making sense of it. Why let all of your other ships get destroyed before you do it? Why assume that the First Order isn't gonna follow the transport ships? Why not tell Poe or everyone on board that this is what you're gonna be doing in the first place? Occam's Razor tells us that the best explanation is the one that requires the fewest assumptions, and some of the plans in The Last Jedi, particularly Holdo's plan, require us to make a number of assumptions. It could be a little unfair to dissect the plan from any movie and say, well, why didn't they just do this instead? But on the other hand, having audiences that demand consistency and logic in what they're watching makes for better content. And that's the beauty of theorizing. It creates more observant and critically minded viewers who begin to ask more of their filmmakers, asking them to think through the stories that they're telling rather than solving their plot problems with cheap gimmicks or deus ex machina. Viewers who expect fictional worlds that adhere to consistent rules filled with consistent and believable characters. So maybe what we need to do is find an area of compromise here. We have to consciously separate theories from the art itself, because the only fair way to judge a movie or a show or a game or whatever is to judge it by its own merits, not by comparison to our own expectations. And by the same token, people who create art should welcome people thinking about it in creative and critical ways, because not only does that spark interest in their work, but it also forces them to dig for both 
the most interesting and most logically consistent way to tell their stories. And you know what? If you're still salty at The Last Jedi, or at the backlash The Last Jedi received, I think we'd all benefit from remembering the following review. Quote, it's a big, expensive, time-consuming, essentially mechanical operation. It is about as personal as a Christmas card from a bank. That scathing review came from the New York Times but they weren't talking about The Last Jedi, they were talking about The Empire Strikes Back when it came out in 1980, now considered to be the best Star Wars film, and perhaps one of the best sci-fi films ever made. Times change. Tastes change. But one thing's for sure, I am definitely not gonna try to predict the ending of Episode 9. Probably. Hopefully. At least until the trailer comes out and I can't help myself. But hey, that's just a theory. A theory theory. Also a film theory. And cut.